a really necessary but hard part of decentering men is taking them out of all your goals. Because we have been conditioned so hard, especially if we are attracted to men, to factor in a man into anything we do in the future that a lot of times men, women end up waiting and waiting and waiting to do these amazing things because they want to do it with a partner, do it with their husband or whatever. Whether that's travel, having a child, building a house. Now, I'm never going to say that, you know, being a single mom is easy. I was raised by a single mom. But I have a friend who is decided she wants to be a mom. She's in her late 30s. And she does not want to settle for trash and have to co-parent with trash and even marry a man, you know, that might be good enough. She, you know, and, and I love that because uh, so a lot of my mutuals talk about this. Don't have children unless you're prepared to be a single mom at some point. Like that, this is not the like, oh, I'm not like, you know, I'm trying to squash your dreams or whatever. But I really, I think women could make so many more informed, powerful decisions and avoid a lot of dangerous situations if we factored in worst case scenarios. And that's why I make videos all the time, like do not move up to another country or even another state or town or neighborhood, but especially another country for a man, unless you know just how hard that's gonna be for you and just how vulnerable you will be because you are on his turf. But the same thing with kids. That's why I'm like, don't let these men baby trap you. If you really want a child that bad, like, why, why do you have to bring a man in that situation? You're literally going to have two now, right? And one is a terrifying giant one that could unalive you at worst. And at the very least, make your life 10 times harder, financially abuse you, you know, especially if they're like a hobo schedule or unalive you slowly through your nervous system because they're so stressful, right? And in terms of building that house, I actually have a friend who built her own house. Her own tiny house. I know tiny houses aren't for everybody, but she really, you know, she was, she was in her, I think 35, 36, when she was like, you know what? I'm tired of waiting. I want a house. And, and, and I remember this one conversation I had with her where she was in the middle of building it. She's a teacher and she, you know, is in a state where the teachers actually make pretty decent money. And she, uh, you know, had her summers off. This woman decided <laughs> with her and her cat that she was going to live in her own tiny house and she's going to build herself because she didn't want to wait for some dude to usher in that dream because then you're going to be stuck in a house with a dude who sucks she <laughs> taught herself how to build a house now again it's a tidy house right but this woman is so tough she's one of the toughest people i know right like she is like you know you would never know from looking at her because she's like Pretty petite, you know? But all summer long, uh, riding every day and camping out, and she was built, you know, just like saws and like, I mean, from, I mean, she was so disciplined, you know, like lights up, you know, from all day working on this house. And then we'd have like little breaks, you know, and then at night we'd hang out after the sun was down. That was such a great summer. I'm working on my book, she's working on her house. And I remember during one of our little breaks, she was like, I'm, there is definitely a part of me that is like, am I sealing my fate as like the old woman who lives in a shoe, you know? You know, like I have this cat. I, you know, I wanted kids. I mean, I, I was hoping for a partner, but she didn't want to settle and she shouldn't have to, right? And I was like, well, I don't know because in my, in my own personal experience, when I wait for something like the golden ticket mentality of like, well, when this thing happens, then this thing will happen, right? Instead of like, you know what, screw it. Like take, decenter men from the fantasy, from the goals, from the dreams. That's what she had done. And that's what I've been doing for most of my life. That even moving to France, you know, I did not, I was like, I did, I actually purposely didn't date while I was in LA and I actually moved to Spain first, but I knew I was like, wanted to move to Europe. I just kind of stopped dating because I was like, I don't want to meet some man that I'm going to like convince myself is worthy of staying for because I don't want to be here. I don't want to live here. I am so done with this city. It's almost like I had like, you know, bumper bowling. I put up things so nothing can distract me for this. You know what I mean? I know how men are. It is very few men who will not try to make you center them and their goals and their dreams and their lives and their moods and their uh, fill in the blank. And I didn't want any of those men entering my life and just dis and distracting me from what I wanted. It doesn't mean I just gave up on dating entirely forever, but until I've 
you know, got to Europe, I was like, mm, nope, no man is getting in my way. So my friend built that house and it's beautiful. I'm going to show you it in a second. She was so proud of herself for building that house for herself, right? And then, I don't know, like a couple years after she built it, she met this really awesome dude. And he's like, they, they align on so many things that I really like this guy. He's awesome. I fully approve of this guy. I spent enough time with him and saw the way he treats her, or looks at her, the way I felt so safe around him, all the things, whatever. Like I say, men can always do the switch up. But I'm not saying build a house. You know, like, <laughs> build it and they will come. You know, that is not the takeaway of this story. If you really want to get married, build a house and he'll show up. That is not my point here, okay? My point is, is decenter men from these goals. Do the thing you want to do. And if that person is, is going to enter your life, he will enter in a life that you have created for yourself. And because you've created that life for yourself and you're very protective of it and love that life, it is more likely you are going to not settle for a bunch of BS or let some man enter into that dream world that you've created this amazing, because women create amazing worlds for ourselves, right? And the happier you are in your single life, the more protective you are of your peace. Because here's what could have happened if she had not built this house for herself and just kept waiting and waiting. And I see this a lot with women, especially if they want children. They will, they will willfully ignore red flags because they just want this so bad and they see what they want to see because they want this thing so bad and they're just like, yeah, 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 no, he's great. He's going to make a get whatever. And then they end up in awful situations and that goal, that dream they wanted so bad, this person has now ruined it, right? Try parenting with a man who sucks, right? That's why my friend is like, the friend who's using a sperm donor, she doesn't want any man coming in and messing up her parenting experience. She doesn't want to have to co-parent. She doesn't want to have to deal with the courts. She doesn't want to have to deal with some man having access to her just because he like pumped and dumped once or whatever. I hate that phrase, but I, whatever. And so my friend actually, and she ends up, she actually, she met him. Um, they end up having a kid together. Um, I think they ha they actually have a bigger house now. Like, and I love this dude. And also as a tomboy and a woman who's worked men's jobs my whole life this man knows that this woman is smart he's not threatened by her strength he doesn't exploit her strength like a lot of men do by the way just look at my dog right now <laughs> look at you you are so see this is why i don't have kids the point is is please take these imaginary fantasy amazing men out of the equation and that is actually gonna it's gonna create some grief you know what it also does is that this woman is so proud of the life that she built for herself. Not just that she built by herself, but for herself, for her future self and her cat that has three legs. I've gone and visited her so many times since she finished this house. She just made this really magical place for herself because it was really important for her to have a home. For me, it's, I've always had different goals than kids or a home or whatever, but I have centered those goals of mine. For me, it's my creativity, storytelling, others, it's children, whatever. Please take men out of the equation. And you may never meet a partner. And that a lot of women have to grieve. I accepted a long time ago, I was probably never getting married. That's why I didn't even bother dating until like 36. So I was like, well, pff, can't be bothered. I will say this, knowing how happy I am single gave me so much more power going into relationships because the stakes are lower. I'm not hinging anything on men. We are building something together, but I also know because I've done so many amazing things in my life for myself that none of my happiness hinges on any one man. I'll never let a man have that much power over me. I really think a lot of women make better decisions when you factor men into them.